You are watching Well Child Life with Jonathan and Jennifer, and today we are in Trondheim, Norway. If you arrive in Trondheim at the cruise port, you are right in the center of town, so really easy to get around. You'll get off the boat, you'll walk down a promenade, you'll recognize this really modern harbor area, which is interesting and part of this whole Scandinavian architecture. But you'll also see antique boats and immediately fun stuff to do. You will be met by volunteers at the port who will give you maps of the city. You'll come up over the sky walkway to get into the city center. It's a bit of a climb up. If you have mobility issues, that could be an issue. And then it's straight across over the train tracks and the main road. You'll see the historic old brick of buildings all along the wharf. Since the early days, the Nadelva River has been lined on both sides by wharves, warehouses, and boathouses. They were also used as defenses, and corridors and barriers were built so that locals could throw rocks at the enemy. The wharves along the river continue to be some of the most historic and most photographed areas of the city. Trondheim lies on the Trondheim Fjord. Though it is further north than Oslo, Bergen, and Alesund, it is still a few hundred miles short of the Arctic Circle. But that doesn't mean you can't see northern lights between the months of September and March. Trondheim is the third largest city after Bergen and Oslo in first place. It is home to the Norwegian University of Science and Technology, the largest university in Norway. And the city is considered the technology and innovation hub of the country. In 997, Trondheim was just known as Kalpanger, or the word for city. It then was known as Nidaros, and it served as the Viking capital until the 1200s. This is an old city and it's marked by some old places. You'll see fabulous buildings as well as the Market Square. Market Square lies in the center of Trondheim. It is a bustling place with lots of kiosks, seagulls screaming, but lots of kiosks for souvenirs, food, trinkets, clothing, and a, you'll know it because of the statue in the center of the square. The Nidaros Cathedral is an amazing Gothic architectural church. There is a fee to get inside. What I would tell you is walk around all sides. You've also got the Archbishop's Cathedral and Garden over to the side. There's a cafe, museum, gift shop, all in this central square. The cemetery has graves dating back to the 1700s. It, it is really the shining star at the center of Trondheim. In the year 1080, building began on the Nidaros Cathedral at the burial site of King Olaf, the patron saint of Norway. This is the northernmost Gothic church in Europe and is the coronation place for the Norwegian royal family. In the Middle Ages, Olaf's body lay at rest in a silver coffin on the high altar of the church. But during the Reformation, the coffin was sent to Denmark for melting into coins and his remains were buried in a place under the cathedral that is still unknown. To the side of the cathedral is an archway that will give you passage out to the Archbishop's Palace. While we were there, we found Viking games going on, complete with some of the best acting we've seen in a long time and some of the most fun kids. There were also little shops and games with lots to do and see and enjoy. <laughs> Rydde 
Towards the wharf from Market Square, you'll come across the main shopping street. And this is full of shops and cafes and restaurants, and has more of that traditional Scandinavian architecture. And back at the wharf, don't miss those converted warehouses. This is really probably the most photographed part of Trondheim. The wharf also acknowledges the history that fishing and trade have had in this city. Whether you arrive by train or by boat, you'll be right at the wharf for the views and you'll have access to the rest of the city. If arriving by ship, your boat will likely dock right next to the Pier de Bade, the glass enclosed indoor swimming hall. But wherever you are, you aren't far from where you want to go. While we're in Trondheim, I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the social systems here because we saw someplace that was really interesting. Norway has an incredible amount of wealth. And so for those of you that don't know, let me just do a quick explanation. They have tremendous oil reserves in their country. And upon mining those reserves, they have gone ahead and sold them to other countries. They don't use petroleum particularly themselves. About 92% of their energy is all derived from hydroelectric power. So you will see electric cars everywhere. Taxi cabs are electric in this country. It, it is just sort of ubiquitous to see electricity being used because it's not expensive for them. Because of the hydroelectric, they're not using oil to fuel their country. So they sell that oil and they have put all of the profits of that into a trust. And that trust goes to fund various services in their country. So you see their roads are in really great shape. They have really good social service networks. So there really isn't an issue of poverty anywhere in the country. In Oslo, you may see some level of homelessness. And I wanna be careful how I say this, but almost by choice, there are services available to people if they choose to avail themselves of those services. And generally, when you do see some kind of homeless issue, it's because there's usually drugs or alcohol involved in that. So having said that, it sounds really utopian, but what we were impressed with in Trondheim was we found a church that was providing free hot meals to anybody, regardless of the reason they wanted or needed a hot meal. So understanding that most people have access to both shelter and food, it isn't necessarily so much that people needed a hot meal, but what the church was recognizing and the people that were there serving were recognizing is that it was a level of support and camaraderie, encouragement, and a way of saying, no judgment here, if there's a problem, we can help you. And I think that was a real key to what we saw with the need for mental health in any country. There's no geography, and there's no governmental service that sort of takes care of mental health. Although we have seen some governmental services that really do a good job of addressing mental health issues. So when we saw a charity that was saying, we are a place of safety, of security, of compassion. It was really impressive and we saw people using it and they didn't look destitute, they didn't look starving. They looked like they could use a friend and there was a group of gentlemen that had built a fire out in front of the church and they were welcoming folks to come and sit with them and to talk, they were sharing stories, there was lots of laughter and joking going on. And I think our feeling was just really 
an intense sense of the Norwegians that we saw got it. Money wasn't an issue, but mental health was. And they were using a hot meal to symbolize a message of acceptance, lack of judgment, and just compassion. We're here, and if you need a place, and if you need people, this is it for you. And that just felt really good. I'm really careful about posting this footage here. I did ask to talk to some people, and I was asked to please be very respectful of everybody's privacy. So I have really tried to block out some faces. We don't want to impinge on anybody else's dignity. We feel like this was such a beautiful thing that we were seeing. We wanted to record it, but we don't want to humiliate or shame anybody that's obviously the opposite of what this whole mission was about but we do want to thank the church and we do want to say we loved what we saw thanks for being here with us in Trondheim come along and we are on our way to Honingsvig way up in the Arctic Circle